rolling in a limo. Beautiful women throwing themselves at you. They had all the man toys that they wanted. Cars, planes, housing, weapons, and they had a party life. With boatloads of money. Money, money, money. We rich <laughs> And white mountains of coke. Once upon a time, drug dealers was truly idolized. But this fairy tale is real. It could be called the Motor City Mafia. And a major player at the urban center of Detroit, believe it or not, a freckle-faced mop top 14-year-old whom I introduced to the world. You're not trying to tell me that you're an angel. And his nickname is White Boy Rick. His real name is Rick Worshey Jr. Kid Rock raps about him. Got more cash than White Boy Rick. And Hollywood is making a movie about the teenage drug dealer that will star Matthew McConaughey as Rick's dad. McConaughey recently visited Rick in prison. Had I not actually broken the story, in the back seat, officers found a large sum of money. I don't know if I would even believe it. But now I'm featured in a new documentary titled White Boy. And I went back to Detroit to attend the premiere. Everyone knows who I am, but no one knows the real reason I'm in here. White Boy Rick has been sentenced to life in prison. And he says he's not behind bars for being a drug dealer. He's there for retribution. Is he really in there because he had drugs in the back of his car? Or is he in there for taking down all these public officials? While most high school freshmen were flipping burgers and worrying about taking their SATs, Rick Worshey Jr. was on the path to becoming a crime legend. Rick grew up uh, in, on the east side of Detroit, which is a notoriously very tough, tough area. Rick's dad, Rick Sr., was a struggling inventor who just happened to have an extremely dangerous side job. He also had a business where he would illegally sell guns on the black market he could get you anything, he could get you grenades. He was socializing and doing business with the biggest drug dealers in Detroit. By the time Rick Jr. was 14 years old, he'd pretty much met every drug czar in the neighborhood. But he knew just from being on his stoop and riding his bike in the neighborhood and interacting with people in the neighborhood, who was who. Little Rick was about to be pedaling more than his bike. Before long, he began hanging out with Johnny Curry of the notorious Curry Brothers drug gang. Johnny Curry at that time was in his late 20s, early 30s, one of the biggest drug kingpins in the city, rolling around in his custom Mercedes with 14-year-old mop top, blonde haired, blue eye Rick, who looked like Leave it to Beaver. It was almost a novelty. So when Curry offered the teenager a job selling coke, he took it. We had started letting him do a little errands, and then he started knowing a few people that you figured you buy from the white boy, so the dope is good or whatever. I bought a car when I was 15 years old. Uh, Sweatsuits, jewelry, cars. Well, I was making more money than the adults that I knew. While most thought Rick was working for the Currys, the 14-year-old was hiding a secret that could get him killed. Here's the truth. At the age of 14, I was recruited by the FBI to become an informant. That's right, Rick Jr.'s boss was the FBI. He's believed to be the Bureau's youngest informant ever. I think he earned nearly $40,000 in informant fees. And believe it or not, it was his dad, Rick Sr., who was already working as an informant, who offered his son up. The use of a child as an informant was illegal. So technically, they used the father and they just used him as a straw man for Rick's information. According to the documentary, the FBI was trying to crack down on some corrupt cops and relatives of Detroit Mayor Coleman Young, believed to be in bed with the Curry Gang. Lots of members of federal law enforcement had a giant agenda to go get Coleman Young and try to tie parts of his administration into the Curry organization. Biographer Scott Bernstein says it all centered around the mayor's niece, Kathy Volson Curry, Johnny Curry's wife. She had heard about the Curry brothers and what we was into and our life, so we started dating. And then next thing you know, we was married. They became very worried about Kathy, assigned a police detail to guard them, and that police detail basically was protecting a drug operation. But before long, the FBI claims some members of the Detroit Police Department wanted in on the action. There was actually 
large quantities of cocaine delivered in police cars to crack houses at times. They would also go out and raid other crack houses and bring the drugs to these guys uh, for a fee. The FBI needed Rick to keep cozy with Curry and snitch on the bad cops. He was out on school nights till two and three in the morning. His father apparently permitted this because there was money involved. Government documents would show the FBI was sending his 14-year-old son into crack houses with wads of cash to make massive drug deals. White Boy Rick was in. They were really running Detroit. They were sort of rock stars. But after a few suspicious FBI raids, Johnny Curry began to smell a rat. None of this is confirmed, but I've had good sources tell me that Johnny Curry ordered Rick Worsey to be murdered. I had nothing to do with his getting shot. One day after a drug run, Rick Jr. is shot in the stomach, allegedly by one of Curry's drug mules. He was shot at close range with a 357 Magnum. Went in the front, out the back, blew his large intestine in half. It was a close call. The task force realized that if he died, the fact that they'd been using a 14-year-old kid to infiltrate drug gangs was going to come to the surface, and it would be a scandal of all scandals. It was time to get Rick out and bring down the Curries as quickly as possible. But before the FBI gets their opportunity, there's more gunfire. This time, a 13-year-old boy named Damian Lucas is accidentally hit and killed in a drive-by shooting. This becomes a very hot topic. The documentary claims the Curry gang was responsible for the shooting, but no one had proof. That is until Rick Jr. says he overhears a phone call between Johnny Curry and one of Detroit's most famous detectives. Gil Hill had become wildly popular as Eddie Murphy's tough-talking boss in the movie Beverly Hills Cop, but in real life, Hill was head of homicide for the Detroit Police Department. He was a guy with quite a bit of cachet. He had, he had his eyes set on the mayor's office himself. And now, white boy Rick says, without a doubt, Gil Hill helped cover up the murder of 13-year-old Damian Lucas. Johnny placed a call to Gil, put it on speaker. We were riding around in Johnny's BMW. Basically, Gil told him not to worry about anything. They went down and met, and he said he gave Gil 10 grand to cover up the kid's murder. Up next, white boy Rick is a marked man, but who put a bullseye on his back? He said that he wanted us to kill white boy Rick. 